there's this thing called the Stress Science Laboratory. What is that? So it is a consortium of our colleagues and faculty in the College of Nursing. We have a variety of faculty who are interested in doing research with stress. How do you measure stress? What are you looking for? And how do you make sense of it all? So we've been able to start to collect and measure cortisol in hair. Hair is a great medium because it, it grows about a centimeter a month. So, sometimes. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> so it grows about a centimeter a month. It gives us the average cortisol over that period of time. We use a process called an ELISA assay and it actually will allow us to measure cortisol. You can measure hormones, a, lot, a variety of other kinds of stress hormones or inflammatory biomarkers and we can use those. Looking at them is how much they might predict your health. So like your blood pressure could be even considered a biomarker. It's a measure of your health, your biology of what's going on. I mean, that's really cool. And I know from the diabetes space, you know, they have these cool glucometers, almost glucose cool patches that you can actually wear and check your sugar levels yes. throughout the day and really mon monitor that. Is there gonna come a time where we're gonna have a, a stress meter that I'll put like a little patch on my shoulder and I can study it myself and say, okay, wait a minute, this is going into the red zone, I need to calm down, or, or I'm green, I'm happy. Do you think that could actually happen? Yes, I do. I think I'll be here before probably we know it. I think there's a lot of work going on in trying measuring biosensors, and a lot of it is primarily right now for research purposes, but it will go mainstream. I mean, if you think even about some of the wearable devices we have now to measure our fitness, sure. and a lot of them are really moving forward and being able to capture your heart rate, heart rate variability, because heart rate variability is a measure of that kind of sympathetic nervous system response, that pattern of the flight or fight thing. So you can see some abnormalities in how your heart beat changes with stress and, it, and it's being able to pick up that kind of the part of that stress response system. What's the relationship between stress and actually our health? There's a strong relationship between stress and health. Of course, acute stress is adaptive. It's going to save our life if something is happening and we need to get out of the way of a car coming at us. What can be a concern is if it kind of goes into more of a chronic stress where you have these chronic events that are happening, repeated events. Your body then just continues to stay in overdrive in the stress response. Over time, it doesn't impact your immune system. And so what we will see is that higher levels often of inflammation and that inflammation increases risk for cardiovascular disease. We can see an increased risk with some cancers, very strong relationship with mental health disorders. So talk about stress in the context of our social implications, the stigmas, people having real disease, but they're mediated not because of any fault in themselves, for example, but just because of their macro environment and micro environment might be really stressful. We all have stress, and but the stress is not distributed equally among our population. So people obviously and um, are, are born into more adverse situations. They may be born into ha having living in a poverty or a higher violent neighborhood. And we certainly see uh, stigma and, and racism have an impact on stress. These stressors can accumulate and impact health cumulatively, but we can also see that there's more sensitive periods of development as well in early childhood when the brain is really developing at a rapid pace and as well as adolescence, because adolescence is another period with all the hormonal changes and there's a lot of brain, uh, brain changes and frontal lobe changes during adolescence. It's kind of another sensitive period that when you encounter a lot of stressors, it can actually have a greater impact than it might at a different time point in your life. Depending what you're born into, um, that may actually, and it's not an excuse, but it might be an explanation for some of the violent behavior or poor choices that we see different members of community making. Is that can, can that be an argument? Yes, definitely. My background is in nursing and I was a pediatric nurse practitioner in primary care. And so a lot of the work that we did with adolescents, you know, is, is focusing on health behaviors. I think everybody can recognize when you're under stress, you may be more likely to want to overeat. It's often um, people will, will engage in substance use and that can actually suppress that kind of feeling bad and making them feel better. Negative behaviors can be in response to stress. Certainly we can see it as well with how it might impact lots of other decision-making processes about how people are, are responding in the moment to a stressful situation. There's a lot of issues with hypervigilance as well. I mean, you kind of are always on edge of wondering if something's going to happen and just kind of, uh, you're just kind of having to be vigilant and, and on, on edge all the time. This is fascinating. It really draws a nice connection between science, biology, physiology, our bodies, and the reality of certain social circumstances of how we go about our day-to-day -day living.